Greetings. Today we are looking at the SR71 with a top speed of Mach 3.2 and then we're going to be looking at a space shuttle. Really? Well, that sounds pretty good. Some facts about the SR71 with a top speed of Mach 3.2. Um, it actually could go faster than Mach 3.2. It has the ability, but the plane will um, come apart. Um, the back end of that equals uh, gets up to 649 degrees Celsius and has to it requires a special black paint and it um, uses a astro inertial navigation system that uses the stars to uh, calculate its positions and uh, one of the main abilities to achieving these speeds is uh, because of the ramjet system and you can <clears throat> research a little bit more on that if you want to and um, the ramjet system actually allows would allow the jet to go up to Mach 5 but um, uh, like I said uh, it gets too hot and there's too many other problems for the jet it constantly expands and contracts as it flies um, at its uh, Mach 3.2 it does leak uh, fuel on the runway constantly. Um, it constantly needs uh, maintenance and new sealant supplied because of the expanding and contraction during flight. Um, it has to have a special fuel tank, um, uh, again, because of just so much going on at that speed, so much expanding and contracting. So interesting stuff. So now I want to take a look at the Space Shuttle Discovery STS-133. I looked at several different space shuttle flights and launches and the STS-133 is just the one that I landed on and um, there's some things about it that um, just doesn't seem to make sense to me and so we're going to take a look at that. So again this is STS-133 and one thing that uh, I remember when I was a kid I noticed this and it really freaked me out this uh, looks like a bouncing effect on takeoff you know how much throttle control do they have to have so that it doesn't come crashing back down into the launch pad it looks like it would make me very nervous let's take a look at this go for main engine go for main engine start we have main engine start two one booster ignition and the final liftoff of discovery a tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Now we'll go back to its back. They have been arrived into orbit. Discovery now making one last. Okay, here. So uh, I did some research, and for this to get into low Earth orbit, and uh, it requires a speed of Mach 23 point something, uh, basically Mach 24, and this launch um, after eight minutes from launch it hits Mach 24 and I'm wondering how these brackets stay intact how do they not become just shredded and all these other little things like this down here on the tank you know how does this not become shredded and I didn't realize this until I was researching making this video how much um, NASA and the this is NASA footage here uh, from directly from NASA. But how much reach of the stars? They just zoom in. And I, I wanted a perspective where they don't. You know, what's this look like from the ground? And uh, I had to go, and I'll show it here in a little bit. I had to go find amateur footage. Otherwise, um, there was. There was none. No, there was no professional footage of that I could find where they just showed what it looked like from the ground. So let's take keep taking a look at this here. Reducing the stress on. Trying to speed it up. This is what I'm. Doing. Discovery Houston, you are go and throttle up. This is about two minutes into the flight. Uh, 
anyway, it just keeps going on like this where they show the, the close up. It's hard to see, you know, use your the ability to use your senses to see how far down range it is. But uh, something to keep in mind is eight minutes into the flight, Mach 24. And so I want to now take a look at some amateur footage. So this is some amateur footage that I found, and I found several. This is the same flight, by the way, the STS-133. I made sure everything was the same. Um, so this is about two minutes long, and I'm not going to um, play the whole thing, but you get the idea of what I'm talking about. When this takes off, and I watch this side by side with the NASA footage, but just zooms in, you know, and after, like I said, when you get... Uh, into eight minutes you're at Mach 24 and um, you know two and a half minutes I mean it's pretty ridiculous Mach 6 or 7 or somewhere in there I mean you can see it for yourself but my my criticism is you know after two and a half minutes that thing should be so far gone and it's and it's just right there if I was just to look at it and use my senses I would say you know, it's going 600 miles an hour, maybe. And if it wasn't for the little gauge that NASA provides showing, oh, no, it, it, you know, we're hitting Mach 10 right now. No way. Looking at the amateur footage, I, I don't I don't mean to sound so critical, but just using my senses, I would say there's there's no way that that's hitting these speeds. If it wasn't for this little gauge telling me, let's just watch a little bit of this here. Oh, my God. 